Bill Gates has been investing his own money into the food supply chain and mainstream media companies while partnering with the FDA. People are wondering why his foundation is funding these initiatives, and this doesn't only affect Americans, as these investments are global. Welcome to Plant News. I'm Louisa. Let's dig into the topic of Appeal Sciences Incorporated, a company that manufactures produce coatings that Bill Gates has ties to. Before we begin with Appeal's story, let's discuss investing. In the United States, citizens have to pay taxes on income earned throughout the year from a job as well as taxes related to interest earnings, capital gains, things you might have purchased, traded assets, property owned, etc. There are federal, state, and local jurisdiction taxes. Money typically flows where the public interest is invested. There's freedom of choice in employment and how citizens spend their money. The federal tax system, the national taxes, allows for people to deduct some of the taxes owed if they reinvest their money back into the economy somehow. It's an incentive to put money back into the economy versus keeping it in a bank. And this is why some people turn into philanthropy to which they give their financial contributions and receive a tax deduction. Bill Gates has a foundation to which he donates money into every year called the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and it openly claims their personal financial deductions amounted to around 11% yearly on average. The foundation created is a nonprofit. They give grants to organizations and companies. They can invest in a company's future success. They are not entitled to a company ownership or profit sharing. So technically, Bill Gates is not investing in this company called Appeal to own assets in the company. His foundation is granting award money toward the company as a one-time grant. The foundation gave $100,000 research grant to Appeal in 2012 and an operating grant of nearly $1 million in 2015. In general, a foundation is a good win for everybody. People donating to the foundation get a tax deduction as a reward for investing in the economy, while their money is being used to invest in common interests that they personally believe in. These interests and the grant proposals are listed on the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation website. In general, the agricultural initiative in the foundation is tied to the idea of sustainability and solving food waste. Then the public is made aware of these grants because the company itself pays for press releases in order to better market the company to attract actual business investors who might want to put more money into the company in order for a future return on their investment. So in this case, the company proudly proclaims that they receive money from people like Bill Gates, when in actuality, Bill Gates invested in the foundation and then the foundation decided who to invest into. Bill Gates' own PR team might say that he invested, but it's for his own reputation, so he looks better from doing it. The company itself discloses these large names because it makes them look more attractive to actual business investors. Then other celebrities joined the bandwagon, like Oprah, Katy Perry, who also invested. This is the typical business investment marketing cycle. So we can't know if any of these particular people even ever heard of the company personally before their money went towards it. My point here being, we can't know their intentions, even if they invested millions of dollars. Appeal says they create a plant-based coating used to cover fruits and vegetables after harvest, so that it can prolong how fresh the produce stays. They create two coatings depending if the produce is conventionally grown or certified organic. They and the public keep referring to their product as Appeal, but there are differences between the two coatings. Ed Appeal is the product they sell for conventional produce and is made of mono and diglycerides that have been derived from grapeseed oil as per their generally regarded safe notice Appeal sent to the FDA in 2019. This product is specifically a food additive emulsifier that was patented in 2015 in Poland labeled as INS471 or E471, considered an emulsifier made from the chemical synthesis of glycerin and fatty acids. And in this case for Ed Appeal, the grapeseed oil. According to Appeal's own documentation, Solvents are used in their extraction process of the grapeseed oil and mention either heptane or ethyl acetate as the solvents used. And I love mentioning solvents used in the food industry as it's always been a hidden element in manufactured foods from the public. Both heptane and ethyl acetate, according to their MSDS, are recognized as harmful to human health. In appeals documentation, they also list specifications that their mixture should adhere to, including a limit of up to 6% total weight of soap and list the upper limits of heavy metals as well. The heavy metal limits are from the amount of just extraction from the grapeseed oil condensing. I think most people would agree that any lead per day is too much. That being said, Appeal's own patent in 2017 lists a sanitation process done to the produce at the time of application of the coating as well that also uses solvents like alcohol, ethanol, methanol, acetone, isopropanol, or ethyl acetate. This is necessary in the coating process as a solvent is necessary to penetrate into the skin and cause abrasions so that the coating has something to adhere to. 
This might explain why Appeal can't get regulators to agree to use this coating on everything sold in the EU. They can only use their coating on produce where you would not normally eat the skin, like on citrus, melons, and bananas. The EU does not deem Ed Appeal safe enough to use on produce with edible skins. Appeal's other product, Organ Appeal, uses the same 471 emulsifier, but adds citric acid and sodium bicarbonate into the mix to help protect the produce against microorganisms during distribution to try and prevent decay. They tell you exactly right here in their own words that citric acid helps to kill living organisms. What is citric acid? Well, I'm going to go more in depth in this in a future video, but citric acid is made from growing Aspergillus niger, commonly known as black mold. And in some instances, candida is used instead. This is listed in the USDA information sheet about citric acid and its related salts. Black mold is commonly known to be hazardous to human health in the same way it's hazardous to the living organisms appeal wants to protect their produce from. Specifically, organ appeal is listed as a fungicide in the OMRI listings approved for organic growers. And an important note to add here is that Great Britain organic regulation is not permitting organ appeal to be used on organic produce in England at this time. Concerning health, regulators like the FDA consider appeals products to be so safe that they don't even define an upper daily limit. Regulators around the world also keep loosening the restrictions on these emulsifiers and food additives in general to allow more companies to use them. There are a few studies out there published in the last couple of years, though, looking at the effects of these emulsifiers have on the body long term and are finding a higher risk of cardiovascular disease, higher incidence in cancer, and worsening gut health through impairing intestinal barrier function, increasing antigen exposure, increasing the incidence of inflammatory bowel disease, metabolic syndrome, Crohn's disease, and just general inflammation. I've said it before and I'll say it again. No chemically synthesized or processed ingredient has ever been found to be good for human health. What I find most interesting about this news is that no one's asking if any coatings are being used today in our food. Several types of coatings are being used, including plant-based coatings, wax coatings, and petroleum-based coatings. In general, produce coatings have been used for over a century now. If your produce is not made locally for locals that you purchased at the farm, a farm stand, or your farmer's market, then the odds of the produce having a coating on it is extremely high. If the produce has been shipped across country or imported, it definitely has a coating on it. Grocery store employees can't answer questions about these coatings either because companies somewhere in the food distribution chain apply it and they don't have to disclose the information. Nowhere in the supply chain is it required that the produce has to disclose everything that has gone into it or onto it at any point. Even with an organic regulation, there's so much variance, it would be impossible for a general consumer to know everything a specific piece of produce has been done to it without knowing the entire supply chain that it went through. Produce that have coatings include all fruits, and yes, that even includes the savory types of fruits as well, like tomatoes, cucumbers, and bell peppers. Coatings might also be applied to squash, eggplants, parsnips, pumpkins, turnips, and even potatoes. Coatings used in produce are approved for use by the regulatory agency in your country. Coatings might or might not be the last spray application applied to your produce, which means the coatings might have trapped fungicides, pesticides, fumigation chemicals, and other debris into the coating. I personally went through the coatings discovery many years ago when I was allergic to all the organic produce I was eating and finally figured out it was because of the beeswax coating on the produce. Most coatings that I came across couldn't be washed off even using produce cleaners, vinegars, and other methods that people share online. So I had to cut off the skin of the produce to eat them, which is concerning considering a lot of nutrition can be found in the skin, and some antioxidants in fruit are only present in the skin. Considering that the coatings have to adhere to the produce completely, it means that the, the coatings are not meant to be washed off. This is by design. Produce is meant to be rained on or watered on constantly. If the coatings easily washed off, it would come off quickly after application, rendering the application useless. Appeal says on their, on their own website that you can't remove their coating. The coating has penetrated into the skin or peel of the produce because of the solvents used. It's permanent. It's unknown if the coating penetrates into the flesh of the produce though. We do know from other solutions used in the food chain that do penetrate into the flesh of the produce beyond the skin as is the case with pesticides, but we just don't know if Appeal's coating does that. CNBC proudly proclaims that Appeal is helping to end world hunger, labeling world hunger a $2.6 trillion problem. And according to CNBC, as mostly caused by fresh produce going bad before it's consumed. 
Of course, CNBC is probably just repeating word for word what Appeal's press release told them to. My opinion, by observing statistics about hunger and visiting impoverished nations and from observing history, is that world hunger stems from conflicts, political dictatorship, wars, threats to crops like pests, weather changes, diseases, fungal infections, general lack of access to fresh food, governments that do not invest in local food production, global companies buying farmland for their own benefit away from the community's benefit, or from global charities ruining local economies. Produce going bad before it's consumed is generally a problem where food is overabundant because there isn't enough demand for all the produce. While these consumers still demand the abundance and diversity of choice at the store, they rarely use everything they're provided before it spoils. Produce going bad is a problem global companies want to solve so that their produce makes it all the way to your table, even if the produce is an avocado from Mexico and you live in Sweden and expect to always find an avocado at the store. If produce spoils in a local economy where food is scarce, the general issue there will always be a food distribution problem, either stemming from lack of reliable roadways or local conflicts, like from the politics or mafia. In those communities, preserving the produce won't help their unreliable distribution problems. The problems persist and it'll collapse the food supply chain quickly, bankrupting the farmers. Companies that grow produce aren't investing in keeping their produce fresh so that it makes it to places where they can give away their products for free, as the media makes it seem like. No, they invest more money to keep their produce fresh so that they can sell it to a consumer and make profit. No one is sending crates of Mexican avocados to areas in need. Nor would that help the areas in need, because that would put local farmers out of business in those areas, creating less food production and ruining local economies. A factual example of this would be in Haiti, where food aid was given to Haitians and they were made to buy cheap rice from Arkansas in the USA. This was due to Bill Clinton's policies as president and caused Haiti's own rice farmers to go bankrupt, making the country reliant on American rice imports from that point onward, unable to feed themselves. Famously, Clinton apologized for these actions in 2010. For more information about marketing and business decisions related to charitable causes, I highly recommend watching the documentary Poverty Incorporated for more information around that. It's a very interesting topic, and I'll definitely be doing more videos about this in the future. We're not going to solve world hunger from companies selling us more unripened produce to consumers who already have money and access to food. I don't blame a company for wanting to make money and farmers need profits to help them survive, but the virtue signaling is just not necessary and it further confuses the public about actual problems in the world and how they could be, be, be potentially solved. The only claim appeal could make is that they prevent food waste for the company and help produce stay fresher for the consumer, which is a great claim to make, but at what cost? Be very cautious of claims that make us feel good morally. Appeal says they invented a coating that's actually a food additive emulsifier that's been on the market and isn't new. Neither are food coatings new, or nor did the ones on the market underperform in any way. Appeal says that they're solving world hunger but aren't providing anything new. They just replaced other coatings with their own. And Appeal's organic coating is actually a fungicide, which might be worse for health than the natural beeswax coating that was mostly used on organic produce before. I'm not really buying the marketing. I think they probably brand their coating on their produce and in the market to make their name known. If their brand is known, they will likely get more funding and consumers who wish to support the company would be more likely to seek out their foods using their brand. But this does work both ways. Many people are trying to find out where the foods using appeal are being sold and contacting grocery stores to voice their concern about it. This might be the first time in modern history where a lot of people just got educated about produce coatings being used on food and are now voicing their concern about what they might be ingesting. And news is getting around fast. I'm seeing all over the internet uh, videos showing people where their produce had been mislabeled to hide the appeal coating, and they're complaining about how the produce traded with appeal is not ripening properly. People are complaining about the shelf life of the produce, saying that the produce goes from unripe straight to rotting without ever getting ripened, causing them more food waste than they had before. It doesn't sound like Appeal's marketing is holding up so well. To make matters more interesting, the Appeal company and its founder are now members of international nonprofits and organizations committed to food sustainability efforts. While this sounds nice, I bet it's because they can further promote the use of their product to all producers involved in these organizations. This is how a company can grow quickly and change countries' regulations fast by entangling their interests with everyone. Appeal today is valued at over $1 billion and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation grants are a tiny fraction of that valuation. Appeal wants us to know that Bill Gates doesn't own anything in the company and they want us to forget him. But we're wondering why the foundation gave the company a grant to found the company in the first place 
if we already had produce coatings on the market, some of which are arguably healthier and more effective. Bill Gates is now the largest landowner in the United States, some of which is farmland and is currently producing food distributed across the country. So the public is speculating why the foundation keeps investing millions of dollars into mainstream media companies, agriculture, farming, bioengineering, chemical production. These investments are global. They impact the entire world. I'd love to think that a philanthropist generally cares, but like most people, I'm really afraid of a growing monopoly over a food supply chain. Whether the intention is good or bad, I think a monopoly just never ends well. And I'd like to argue we need to maintain diversity and choice to maintain food security and options that can meet everyone's preferences. Appeal is sold at various stores across the globe. To see where their produce coating is sold, use a store locator on Appeal's website or contact your local grocer. If you wish to research other options, opt for finding a local farm stand or farmer to support in your area. Not only can you expect less chemical application because the food doesn't have to be distributed, but you can ask the farmer about their growing practices. You'll get more nutrition since the food will not have been harvested prematurely, and you'll be investing long-term in your local area, supporting a farmer, keep their land and business operational. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Comment below, would you eat the coating? Did you even know about the other types of plant coatings? I've cited most of the sources for this video down in the description box below if you're interested for more information. As always, thank you for watching and make sure to touch some grass today.